All right, so here's an example. Determine the minimum stairway width of a second floor office building with two exit stairways and a design occupant load of 400 persons. Assume each stair handles half the occupant load. Okay, so <clears throat> we know it's an office building, so it's probably going to be a be use group, which means it's not board and care, it's not health care, it's not health care sprinkled or non sprinkled, it's not high hazard, it's one of these all others. And then we also know it's a stair, right? The two exit stairways, so I have to size them to be 0.3 inches per person. So to solve this, I take half that total occupant load, which gives me 200 occupants, because that's what we're assigning to each stair. And to find the width, I simply multiply the number of occupants served by the stair, 200 occupants, by, by that occupant load, by the capacity factor of 0.3. So 200 times 0.3 inches per person equals 60 inches. So high hazard is, is defined in probably the definitions. All right, so another example. We could also, we could also do that calculation in reverse. Um, say we have an existing stairwell, and we want to know the capacity of that stair um, based on its, its width. So in this one, we're going to say, Determine the capacity of an existing 36-inch exit access door and a healthcare occupancy that is not sprinkled. So exit access door, so that's a level component, and it's healthcare that's not sprinkled. So that's 0.5 inches per person, and I know the door is 36 inches, so then to find the total capacity of that door, I take 36 inches and divide it by 0.5 inches per person, and that gives me um, a capacity of 72 occupants. All right, here's where I think it gets a little trickier. Actually, not this one. It's not too bad. So NFPA 101 also, also has minimal allowable widths for egress components. So for, for new stairs, for example, this table in NFPA 101 um, provides us the minimum width that the stair has to be. So if a stair serves a total cumulative occupant load of a stair is less than 2,000 people, the width, the minimum width is 44 inches. So no matter what we calculate for that stair, say if we calculate a stair based on the occupant load to be 32 inches, it has to be increased to 44 inches. If the total cumulative occupant load of the stair is greater than 2,000 persons, then the minimum stair width is 56. And then for existing stairs, we could use this table from NFPA 101. And this simply says that the minimum existing door is 36 inches. So John M. had a question. Uh, when NFPA says capacity through a door, what does that mean? So when I hear the word capacity, that's, to me, the number of occupants. So we go back to this example. We're saying that this existing stair is 36 inches. And if I know the occupant, the occupancy of this of this building, right? So we're saying that this is healthcare, um, and that and it's not sprinklered. That means I could figure out the capacity of this doorway, right? By using 36 divided by 0.05 would be equal 72 occupants. And NFPA 101 is basically like every other building code. It's kind of split up between occupancies, and it's you have to know the occupancy to really get into the details. All right, this is where it gets kind of confusing. So NFPA 101 provides the minimum widths for various components based on occupancy type and whether or not the building is new or sprinkled. So, so to get these components, you have to check with the occupancy chapters, which are chapters 11 through 43. So, so if you get this and say you have <clears throat> some type of um, health care, you, and new healthcare, you would go to that chapter, and then you could usually find the means of egress section pretty quickly, but you would have to search through there to get the minimum width of the component. So this is, this is an example here. Um, it's written poorly, but it's basically saying 
Um, what minimum corridor width is required for a new assembly occupancy? So, so if, I, if I knew NFPA 101 pretty well, I would know chapter 12 covers new assemblies. So I'd flip to that and 12.2 covers the means of egress. And I could fairly quickly find that the minimum corridor width is 44 inches um, when the corridor serves is serving less than 50 people. So Alejandro says um, he was asked if the 72 people on the floor. So so it's basically 72 people being served by that by that particular door. So so if that door isn't big enough, you either add, add, need to add an additional door, or you would need to tear that door out and put a larger door on that can handle a higher occupant load. And and it wouldn't be assuming that every single person is passing through at the same time. <clears throat> 